Okay, Ron, let's work on this. Okay. Madman. 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 <laughs> Madman. Madman. Draper. <laughs> Another edition of iFanboy, the conflict discussion show. My name is Ron, and I'm here with Connor. Hello. And Josh. Howdy. And this week we're talking about Mike Allred. <laughs> Every now and then we like to look at a creator and look at, look at his work. And creator kind of spotlight, just, too. Kind of spotlight, kind of celebrate their work. And per, and, we're, and I picked this one because Allred's one of we, my And we all artists. love Mike Allred's art. Do, we, do you guys really all who, who, who does? What, I right? feel like you're indifferent. I'm a little indifferent. Yeah, fair I, I don't know. You recognize like it. it. I was going to say what right thinking people don't, but then I really forgot this this guy, this right. Jamoki. Yeah, this. <laughs> <laughs> I like when you had the E to end it. <laughs> this Jamoki. Jamoki. So, uh, <laughs> is that racist? So, if you're not familiar with Mike Allred, Mike Allred is, um, is an ar- ar- artist and writer artist. He's mm-hmm. the you know, comic creator. Um, very well known for his kind of clean. Often described as pop art style, yes. right? Um, yes. Very, uh, very brightly colored. Um, Which is surprising why you don't like him because yeah. you love that style. I think it's that uh, I haven't read many stories that it really hooked in. So, like the art, I'm fine with, but I, I for whatever reason, I really want to read. Um, well, we're going to get to it, but some yeah. of the music stuff, Red Rocket Seven stuff. Oh, you would done. love it, yeah. yeah so, so, so um, <laughs> yeah. So to dive in, Mike Allred first kind of burst on the comic scene in 1989, um, where he did some work for Slave Labor gra- Graphics. Mm-hmm. Which I didn't even know they were around that far back. <laughs> which is kind of good for the good on you. They've been around for a while. Wait, no, they're, they're, they're around now. They yeah, were allowed to be called slave labor back then. Yeah, now, they, now it's like SLG. KFC. But um, <laughs> but yeah. So he did in 1989. He did a, uh, an OGN called Dead Air, and um, and then after that, he followed that up with a uh, a, a book called uh, Graphique Musique. And uh, that kind of started a kind of trend in Mike Allred's life in terms of both his art and his creations. He really likes music. Mm. Like he plays in bands. Yeah. And, like he has a band and, and, you know, and, and loves music and always combines it as much as he can. That's going to get to a little later in his kind of career. But um, that really kind of burst him on the scene. But he didn't really, wasn't really well known. He did some work in the early 90s, but it wasn't until Madman. Nice. Which I can't say because of Mad Men. It ruined me with Mad Men forever. <laughs> but uh, Mad Men, his original creator-owned creator work, uh, was first released in 1992 by Tundra. And that's, that's the work he's most known for. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that's, it's his Hellboy. Yeah, yeah it, it really is. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's almost the same sort of and, thing. And to that wit, he did three issues with Tundra in 92, and Tundra is long Remember gone. Tundra was like a big deal? In Tundra was, yeah. Comics. It was a yeah, bunch of, you know. Yeah, Caliber, Tundra, yeah, all those... But um, uh, he moved Madman to Dark Horse, mm-hmm. which makes sense. Yes. Uh, you know, um, in 1994, he did that. With all those, everybody was there. You had Sin City going on there. You yep. had Hellboy going on there. So you had, that was like the, in the early 90s, even though you had Image, yep. Dark Horse was like the place to go for your creator own. Dark Horse, well, cause, well, the thing was that in, in, in Image. 1994, Image hadn't really established themselves as a home for people to do creator own. Because they were still doing their Image Because books. they were, they were still doing, yeah, the seven or the six were still doing their books. Yeah. It would fit an Image now. Yeah, yeah. totally. Well, and it went yeah, with it Image. Now. It is an Image now, yeah, so. But, but um, that was, the, like, in the, in the 90s, that Dark Horse was the place for your up-and-coming creator own work. There was an imprint. What was the imprint? Legend. 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 Yeah, with the with the with the stone face guy. Stone, right? East Island. Yeah, 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 exactly. That didn't last very long. But I remember Allred was like the last creator to come in on under Legend, the Legend yeah. imprint. But anyway, um, so Madman, you've seen the character, you've seen him before. Um, he was featured prominently in Kevin Smith's movies. Like Kevin Smith loved him, put him in, in not Clerks but uh, Mallrats. Oh. Allred did all the art, but in the beginning of the movie, and, mm-hmm. and Madman was in. You saw people wearing Madman T-shirts in all of the Kevin Smith movies. But yeah. he's the guy with he's Which white. He mixed up with Mage. I always had that problem. Well, because of the because of the Shazam lightning yeah. bolt, yeah. So, so Madman as a character, you know, the, the white kind of full body gloves. I always love he's got the gloves, tuft of hair, a little crack in his forehead, and then he's got this bright red Shazam esque, but exclamation point. He's yeah. got a dot at the bottom. That's yeah. the difference between Mage. Mage doesn't have the dot. Right. So. Um, Mage by Matt Wagner, which is another amazing book. I wanted to do more, <laughs> but it's not, it's not gonna. so Madman. Um, Madman's an interesting book because it's it's a hero. He's a hero. So what, what's the concept? Of I Mad mean, the, the, the idea is that this this guy gets killed, and two mad scientists piece him together in a very Frankenstein kind of way, and they actually name him Frank E. Stein. And after their two heroes, Frank Sinatra and Albert Einstein. Nice. Which is a nice little play on words to get him to be... He's basically, he's basically a Frankenstein monster. Mm-hmm. Um, and when they piece him back together, he has no memory and he has powers. He has a little light telepathy, strength, agility. <laughs> he's got light telepathy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Why is that an accent? I don't know, it sounds funny. Okay. <laughs> what is light telepathy? It's like a little bit. Well, like, it's like, it's like a light red think, sauce. Yeah. He's thinking about like. <laughs> Again, why is there an accent? <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> you want me to explain everything? He's <laughs> mad. Like it's, it's a little mad. But anyway, so um, uh, a lot of a lot of times people have a hard time with Madman because it's, it's light telepathy. It doesn't work like that. It's out there. It's totally yeah. like kind of. Very postmodern, very kind of, you know, dreamscapes and wacky shit happens and stuff like that. Um, in the book, Madman, um, Madman teams up with a, with a, a team of other heroes called the Atomics, and so it becomes Madman and the Atomics, and they have adventures and things like that. That kind of that kind of made his kind of mark as kind of an indie creator. But he did, later on Dark Horse in 1997, he did a book called Red Rocket Seven. Which Image recently reprinted um, nicely, really nicely, really good. Which uh, was about, which was kind of like a David Bowie esque music alien story, like, Ziggy, Ziggy Stardust. Kind yeah, of thing. very, very much like that. Very influenced by that, and that got him nominated for an Eisner um, in '97, which kind of you know arrived and that sort of thing. But still, all the '90s, very under the radar, yep. very kind of indie kind of creator. Um, but that changed in 2001. He came out in Marvel into X Force, which is the first time that I ever heard of him. Really? Uh, was it? Yeah. Oh yeah. That, oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. Well, I had only been reading for a little while. He only been back for a couple of years of this. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and yeah, X Force. Uh, this, this was a big deal. This was this was the Casada beginning of the Casada Gemis years where they brought on a lot of indie guys to do Marvel books. And this was one of the craziest stunts I think Marvel's ever pulled. Like we've we've seen a lot of crazy shit in the past ten years. When this happened. This blew people's minds. Well, this happened also concurrently with Grant Morrison uh, redoing the X-Men. The, the X-Men. So this yeah. happened at the same time. There's this wave of change going on. Yeah. So you have X-Force, which I, I didn't really know anything about, but they're very heavily rooted in sort oh, of that so 90s I, mutant thing. Yeah, at the time, it was Cannonball and Sunspot and all those characters, and it was the, the, it was the same run that Rob Liefeld started in 92. It was the same right. numbering. It got up to what issue was it? It was like 115, I think, was the last one. And then 116 is when it started. Yeah. And they literally wrapped up a story, and then X Force One Sixteen was written by Pete Milligan, who was crazy in his own right, in a good way, like a Vertigo writer. Peter Milligan of. came from Vertigo. He was known primarily for Shade the Changing Man at that yeah. point, uh, and he'd done I don't know, other st- other stuff. But like now, he does Hellblazer. Hellblazer. Yeah, and so Pete Milligan writing it and Mike Allred drawing it, and it was completely new characters, Didn't new they, team, no. new team. Did yeah. they kill everybody in the first issue and then start a new team? Yes, after? yes, <laughs> yes. Like, like yeah. they introduced a new team in that first issue, like oh these, are... and then they were all killed yeah, except for like one. Yeah. I think. yeah, and the premise, <laughs> the, the premise, like that. the premise was is that they were mutant superheroes who were pop stars, like media darlings, media yeah. darlings, and they had the PR and they had and you know this whole. We see, you know, this is we, they've come back. DC's done this, yeah. uh, but the other crazy thing is the three issues, and then they renamed the book, started at one again. No, it was more than that. It was, it was a, yeah, it was about a year. It was, was it a year before they renamed Ecstatic? I think one twenty eight is when they renamed it Ecstatics. Okay, yeah, yeah it went longer. I'm pretty. Sure, yeah, but but they changed the name of the book eventually, and Dupe. I remember Dupe. Dupe was the green kind of thing. Like yeah. um, and the thing was, what they did was they introduced these characters in. They they were in continuity. They like Xavier was in the book. Like the X Men made they appearances. Up, yeah, yeah. yeah, they they Wolverine. I remember Wolverine. Wolverine and Dupe had a history, of course. Yeah, yeah. but like, hmm. but and it was just so, and it, it was, was crazy. It was. Crazy! <laughs> it was totally crazy and totally ballsy, but it was also a lot of fun, and a lot of people hated it. Yeah. Well, it was different. Yeah. And it was different in every possible way. Like you yeah. said, it existed in Marvel continuity. When you have those kinds of stylistic clashes that happen a long time, I think yeah. a, lot, a lot of fans aren't used to that, mm-hmm. and they don't want to accept that this part of the story is also part of their story. Yeah. On yeah. the one hand, you have Liefeld, on uh-huh. the other hand, you have Allred. Yeah. On the same Two book. Different styles. As yeah. different as you could possibly get. Uh, mm-hmm. People who like... And, actually, you, and you can like both, but people who really well, like totally fun, But you had you had people who had been reading. I mean, at that point, I was reading X Force for nearly ten years. Mm-hmm. I had I felt as if I had a very strong relationship with Cannibal <laughs> and all those. No, seriously, like you, you you invested a lot of them, and then one day they're gone. There was no explanation. Mm-hmm. There was no like it was like I, I'm I'm in, looking back on it. I'm impressed at the balls it took to do it. There was no transition. There was it's no. It's as if like a band like released their next album, and it was a completely different genre yep. and completely different people in the band. Yep. But they were still called, you know, yeah. whatever band. I miss those crazy Marvel days yeah. because yeah. They, well, they, they they're much. If you, if you if you compare them now to the, that time period, mm-hmm. they're much more like boring corporate. Then, well, no, now they're much more like that '90s thing where they, it's just like more mutants, more covers, more this. No, no. What I mean is that they took a lot more risks. Well, right. Yeah, so what, yeah. I, what I think is interesting. Well, I don't. I, I think that book was sort of a moderate success, and, and people are still talking about it now, at least in sort of critically acclaimed circles. 
what it was is a really good indication and symbol and bellwether for what they were willing to do at that time. Yeah, they were willing to like, really, yeah. do anything because they yeah. were they, they, and it sold. I mean, it did sell. I mean, much yeah. as the people freaked out, there were other people who were like, "Oh, check this out!" And it was mm-hmm. and it was a fun run. It was crazy. It was wacky. They killed characters left and right, and and that was there was the big controversy with the Princess Diana. Oh yeah. Thing they were gonna. I don't remember. They, one of the characters was dead girl, and oh. there was this whole kind of de- death afterlife, and they were gonna. Princess Diana from the dead was going to join the team, and they leaked the co- and, and like they pulled it back. Like the, the, it's controversial. I don't want to get too into it because it was like it was, but, but like That's there was awesome. this Mike Allred drawn image of Princess Di and like the and like like, it was, like reanimated. No, but in the like, costume. Yeah, like oh. it was. Like, that would have been awesome. I know, right? <laughs> like, 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 like at the time, like I know it was too soon. She had, she had just died. Yeah, yeah, but like yeah. if we had talked about it, you know what they did back then? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like yeah. right now, it would be legend. So, yeah, but um, so yeah, so can the big notoriety and then Ecstatics it, it ran its natural course and they ended it which I think was the right thing yeah, to do yeah. and those characters haven't although that's prime for somebody to bring back those characters Is it? Uh, Dead Girls yes. Dead Girls been she's had a couple one shots here and there and Dupe every now and then pops up people but, love Dupe yeah people love the Dupe I don't know yeah, but he's cute yeah, there's a whole other language people trying to translate the language like it was like a symbol language it was very, yeah. I am brute no, yeah. <laughs> but um, so yes, yeah, so then uh, then had a bit of a hiatus, kind of went away. But then he kind of came back in 2007 uh, and brought Madman back to Image, and uh, and that was a run that lasted I think like 17 issues, like 07, 09. That was great. It was. I remember you talked about a lot. Oh, about yeah, we that. talked about it on the Auto Podcast. Very, I described it as very postmodern existential. Like because what it was is what was really interesting was that the story itself was continuing the story of Frankie Stein and it was his his love interest and the team the Atomics team but remember every issue he was experimenting and there was the issue that was t- all oh yeah, yeah there was the issue that was all double page spreads yes. and, and then all move and the, 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 it, it was always just moving across that way then there was the issue that he drew it in the styles of like. Fifty different creators. I remember that. Yeah, remember he drew it like oh, Mike Oming. He drew it like Charles Schultz. He drew yeah, it, yeah. and it was. But he, way he does is he ties in those artistic experiments with the story, so it made sense that in that scene, Mad Man looked like Charlie Brown, like because he was going through some weird kind of thing, you know, spacecapes and things like that. Very cutting edge. Very um, like. But hard to swallow for the average fan. Yeah. I think that's the one problem is that the accessibility. I remember you hated me talking well, no, about it. No, I mean, it's not. I didn't hate you talking yeah, about you it. it. That's, let's 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 tone that back. <laughs> Everybody has their tastes. Like yeah. I'm not one for necessarily esoteric stuff or or um, yeah. uh, abstract. Yeah. Really, that's just it's yeah. It's very my, very my modern thing. abstract kind of you know yeah. interpretation of comics. Mm-hmm. So yeah. But um, that was a lot of fun. But then um, in '09, when that finished, he actually was involved in one of the biggest projects of 2009. It might be his most widely read. Yeah, possibly. Is he did a story in Wednesday Comics? He did the Metamorpho story written by Neil Gaiman, which was one of the best ones oh, in the book. It was beautiful. Wasn't it, it great? It, he is so good. It's scary how good he is, right? Yeah, and, and, and I love his, his style. Is is one almost in a time capsule? Yeah, it, it's almost from another time, from like almost from the fifties, but it works. Yeah, but it isn't because it doesn't no, look like stuff from the fifties, yeah. but it feels yeah. like it. I yeah. think that is that is one. Well, of that's the that's, that's that, inter- spot it. that intersection of modern art and pop art, yeah. like what he, do, you know, yeah. So. Well, it seems like it's sixties art, but not comic art from okay, 60s, but like art from the 60s. Yeah, sure. yeah totally. Um, and perfect for Metamorpho, which is, because Metamorpho, at his heart, was kind of this old swashbuckling, like, uh, old movie star from the 60s type. He was that kind of, he was that kind of guy, that kind yeah. of character, so it worked perfectly, and Neil Gaiman's story was fun, and they did a lot of, remember they did a lot of, like, they did the, the, the game board. They did a yeah, lot of they did a, stuff. They, with the layout and stuff yeah. like that, which already he had done in Mad Men, so yeah. that, it worked perfectly. Neil Gaiman will talk to you about it for 40000 <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was a lot of fun. That was one of the highlights of the book. Was I remember it would come out? We go. Did you see the Mad Men page? Yeah. Oh, did, I, did I just do it? Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Mad Men. The, um, the Don Draper page. The Don Draper page. We need the crying Draper. Every remember time how we used to it. say he drew Mad Men, but he would be a perfect guy to draw a Mad Men. Comic. Yes. Yeah. We did. He would. Yeah, right. We did. Yeah, right. right. He would be perfect for that. DC. But anyway, get so, on that shit. So, um, so Dune and Wednesday Comics, that kind of got him in the door at DC, and he popped up in Fables. Uh, he yeah, had, he did a few issues of Fables uh, after the big first thing ended, and they, they were... Didn't know where to go next? No, no, they were resetting and, and bringing... Uh, the rebooting? character who was the adversary uh, had to be brought into uh, the regular world that they lived was in. Was the adversary from Lucky Stripe? Or from X-Men, the adver- adversary? Oh, I'm not giving anything away. So he did Fables, but that, that kind of got him in the door at Vertigo, which led to, more, more recently, within the past yes. year, um, iZombie. 
which is a uh, series from Vertigo that he's drawing with Chris Roberson. So that's, uh, his, that's what he's doing now. He's yeah. Doing his own, which I... It's an ongoing, so he's probably picking up most of his time. Oh, yeah, no, it is. I yeah. Mean, so, yeah, from uh, what I've heard. I read some of that, but I got it for Mike Allred. Yeah. And it was great looking. I just didn't respond to the story, so I stopped buying it. But it yeah. was, he the story has to do with a girl who zombie takes place in a graveyard. She's and, a and, she's a sentient zombie. She yeah. still has her faculties, but she yeah. also still needs to eat brains. But she's not so down with that. Right. So they find a way around it. And there are other monsters. There are. Yeah. It's, it's it, was very, va- it was a vampire, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it plays yeah. with the, those horror genres a little right. bit in, in a which in is a it, which fun is which, pop which, which I thought was interesting because Allred to me is bright. Bright action pop mm. and I Zombie. I read a couple of issues of it. I'm going to pick it up and trade for the all red stuff. But it's, it was a darker hue. It was a different. It took place in a graveyard. It was a little different, a bit of a tone. That See, we're I used like to. that contrast yeah. because I feel like when you take an artist that is known for doing one sort of thing and then you subvert that idea and you, you put it somewhere else, I, that, yeah. that often yields really good results. And Chris Robertson, I think, is a, was one of the great like up and coming writers yeah. right now between Starborn and mm-hmm. stuff that he did in Superman and this. But um, but speaking of color, you can't really talk about Mike Allred without talking about his wife Laura, who is his colorist, and she's just as important as it, oh, his work. Yeah, totally. I mean, like the 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 color palette used across Madman, across Rock, Red Rocket Seven, across X Force, across you know Wednesday Comic. Like it's she, she's Dave Stewart to his Mike Mignola. Exactly. And, and, yeah. the, and the thing is, when you're talking about a style that's very pop arty, what's the most important thing about pop art is color. The color. Yep. Yeah. So, the, so Laura Allred is as important to his success as, as his artist. Yeah, and they were, and, and they're married. So, I mean, you know, they, but they work really well together. You can tell us. You can tell us. They're Scott. married, but <laughs> they work really well together is what you just said. No, but you know what I mean. I mean, like, of course, of course, they have a good relationship because they're married. But I mean, like, the thing is, you can tell that, like. It just it clicks, mm. and I can't imagine him being colored by anybody else. Mm. I mean, like you, you know, like I almost, I kind of would like to see it just to see what it would look like. But also, I don't why, you know. Did she color all those Mad Men? Did she? Did yeah. she got, everything's been colored by yeah. her the whole way yeah. through. I don't know about the whole way through. I think I, I don't know about the early stuff. The early stuff might not have, mm. but the the, the stuff. Statics and X Force was. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. So she's great. I mean, and and them together. So good, and and go back and look at that Madman series from Image that came out in 07, 09. It's in trades, and and Image has collected all the previous stuff. They put out one of those big omnibuses. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. like so a big you, scary book. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was kind of gargantuan yeah. edition or whatever. <laughs> um, those stuff are just awesome to get lost in. It's the kind of it, Madman is the kind of book you get lost in, like mm-hmm. it just because it's so out there, and some of the stuff is so kind of crazy and wacky. Did Marvel like, just collect Ecstatics again? I don't know. I feel they like should. they did. If they did, I feel then, like yeah. they might have. Yeah. So just, and, you'll, you'll you'll be up there. Okay. <laughs> so All Red is one of my favorite artists. He's great. That, that look, yeah. And and hopefully... Tell us this, Jamoke. Yeah. If you haven't checked out his stuff, <laughs> check out Madman, check out Ecstatic, check out iZombie. Um, he, I mean, he is one of those guys. We were talking before the show. He's one of those guys. Like, you'll see him do covers... You'll see him do, um, you know, pinups for other artists and he's other one books. One of those guys who do like, like, like in one of those really like highly critically regarded books, he'll do like a five pager in the middle of it, like yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. And the art and the writer will be like, "I was so happy to get him." Like, right, yeah. when we talked to Chris Roberson, you know, he was like, "I, I was just a huge fan of him." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was, or like, or like you'll see other like I remember Jersey Gods um, mm, from yeah. Image had I think he did covers or he did pinups mm. for that, and it was just like, "Ooh, all right," you know, like yeah, it was yeah. one of those. Things. And the thing is that he does the same thing. Like in Man Man, he had pinups from Darwin, yeah. from other like, so he's one of those. He's just one of those guys, and it's you know I think the industry is better off with him, with people like this. Um, and plus, also not you know not this really impacts the work, but when we talk about like the Terry Moores and the Jeff Smiths, like Mike Allred and Laura Allred, some of the nicest people you've ever met, like mm-hmm. so so nice. Yeah, so um, so if you go to a con, they're definitely you know get stuff signed. He doesn't sketch at cons, um, which is he's never done. So that's I mean that's fair. But um, they're so nice, and they'll sign whatever you want and talk to you, and like they're they're just great people. So. You're telling me a Mad Men comic by Mike Allred would not sell? Oh, it totally would sell. Who'd write it? Can you get that look down? Matthew Weiner. 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 Weiner's Twitter. the other guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> no, you're telling me that would sell to like the outside world, like the Mad Men fanatics would buy that. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. I don't want. Yeah. To the scary outside world that's out there. <laughs> They know come in comics. <laughs> Dark. <laughs> Pokemon. MCTV.com. That's yeah. all on there. It'll be fine. So go to iPanboy.com. That's where we got to post about this episode. Check out some artwork from Mike Allred. Tell everybody what you think, what your favorite moments are from Allred. Check him out. <laughs> He's a good looking man. He Check is, him out. You can, yeah. you can write to iFanboy, contact at iFanboy.com. You can call us at our voicemail line at 888-FANBOYS, which is 326-2697. And you can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash iFanboy. Go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash iFanboy. Like that page, and you can find out all of our updates throughout the day, what we put on the website. 
all the great content we've got going on. Just a bit of live social networking. Ne again, why an accident? There's no context for it. Madman had uh, Madman had the yo-yo was his weapon. You remember that? Like the, there's all those great. And they Dark Horse actually made yo-yos with the with the logo. It was fun. This, the British, because... It's the context. Uh, well, it actually goes back to a Monty Python joke where uh, they're talking about... It's the, the crunchy frog. Okay, he yeah. He says, he says the frog is lightly killed. Right. And so the, the trigger of the word light... Light, okay, yeah. yeah. Or if you have to explain when you it... Add, well, see, the thing is, nobody asks to explain it except you because you're a pedantic <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> He's well, American audiences are, are used to that. Right, yeah. He's a great big fatty. He is, no, he's a big, big bearded fatty, yeah. which I was shocked to see. Oh, my famous fantasy writer is a big fat guy with a beard. You got a hole in your jeans. You're about to have a hole in your jeans. Well, they've already been stitched. No, I got them fixed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your balls Why are you looking at my fucking crotch? Because I can see <laughs> it and just shifting over. I'm like, he's got a big hole in his crotch. He's like, is that...